What's up, y'all? This is Tressie. And this is Cedric, and we're through the crate. Digging through cultural and current events through the hip-hop lens. Let's get to it! Hey, guys. <laughs> so what do we have for everyone today? Oh, what man. should we be talking about? What's Who going knows? on in the world? I think um, it should be noted that this is our... What is it, six, 16? 16th episode. 16th episode. Yes. Yes. Um... We should also note why we're coming a little late with the 16th episode. Yeah, so we we tried to upgrade some machinery, get you guys some better tubes, expand the repertoire, mm-hmm. uh, and it just kind of failed. Yeah, it totally failed. Technology uh, failure. Yes. Uh, uh, shit is going back. <laughs> it's definitely going back. Back to where it came from. Back, back to wherever the Amazon. fuck it gets. <laughs> Oh, that's a fucking video. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, we recorded one whole episode and that did not go well. We were not going to provide you guys with shitty audio. We've already done that in our first two episodes. <laughs> so we are trying to continue. Shut up. Stop. So so that's what that shit was doing. It Basically. fucking sucked. Um, but anyway, we're going to try and continue to provide you guys with um, better audio as we go on. Yes. Um, not try and backtrack. But anyway, we've got some good shit to talk about this episode. Um, pretty exciting stuff. We have like almost two weeks worth of shit to talk about. How are we going to fill it in, fit it into this motherfucker? I don't know. But guess what? We're going to try. We are going to make it happen. We we're not going to try. We're going to make that ooh, shit speak happen. to existence. That's what I like. I like that. So no that. waste of time. Let's get I right like to that. it. Major key. Do it. Uh, um, so what have you been listening to? Oh, well, you know, there was this album that dropped. Really? Oh, yeah. What was it called? Um, it was from a little fella from- Little uh, guy, isn't he? Yeah, little guy. I can just imagine this is just a little, little hobbit rapper. What's his name? Oh, his name is Isaiah Rashad. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's from, he's from the uh, TDE camp. Okay, yes. And uh, he got his shit together and he put out a great album. We wanted to talk about it last episode, yes. but we did not have enough time to give it its just like due, I guess you can say. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. W- what did you think about this album? What what'd you, What were your thoughts? I mean, you know, we saw Isaiah Rashad when he uh, opened for Schoolboy Q on the Oxymoron tour a few years mm-hmm. back. Man, that energy was crazy. Like, it actually brought me to a new level of understanding his music, seeing it live, and Definitely. seeing the energy that he he just like put forth in these songs on these like tracks that you wouldn't necessarily expect that much energy. And like you said, he is a little dude, so he mm-hmm. he's got to do the energy of someone twice his size, and he definitely does that on stage. And I was like, man, uh, Sylvia did most dope. Like, and and I I really enjoyed that. Um, so I was very excited when I heard about this album. Like. They were teasing, like TDE was teasing for a while. Something's coming out. Yeah. And it was Isaiah. Uh, so there was a lot of hype, at least in my mind as a fan, there was a lot of hype. Right. Uh, so, you know, I started the album and uh, first rundown, it was it was pretty good. I mean, I wasn't like uh, blown away by, by it as a whole. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like when I first put it on, you know, there's definitely... Some catchy songs on there, like for the squad. You know, I was definitely feeling that one. Yeah, uh, that's definitely a dope one. You know, that made one. back. Uh, and it's got a nice like groove to it, like yeah. the nice flow that he like with the that chorus. Yep, it's super dope. He put out like a, a really cool visual with that one. Oh yeah, the when, video was good with that. That yeah. was a super good video. I loved yeah. how they had like the dollar signs above their heads and exactly. everything. That was super dope. Um, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but that whole that whole hook I think is basically what made that song though, especially like that part where he's you know by the beer by it by boo Mayari saying yeah. like when he's talking about how his son's saying stuff you ain't got nothing you ain't nothing a baby but a baby your fear is growing up like that whole thing right there I'm like man, the whole chorus just speaks to me yeah you know especially what we're doing dealing with now with like everything that's happening in this this world. The only fear of for his child is it's gro- they're growing up. But you know, if I can pay my bills, I'm good. Right. Like that's all I want. And I think about like I just this whole course just to me like speaks volumes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And like even in the video, the little little kid had more money than he did. Yeah, he, the whole time. The whole time. The and whole then when time. he gave him the two dollars to get the whatever that was from the vending machine, he had two dollars above right. his head, and then it was gone, and they were both right. broke. <laughs> <laughs> Neither yeah. one of them had nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that song was pretty dope. Um, I actually like. So just, I'm not going to go through song by song. Yeah. I mean, we already know Free Lunch was pretty good. Like, to be honest, if I think about Rope, I really like that. What's Wrong was really good. Park was really good. I actually really liked going through this whole um, album. Like, I was super into it. And, and it, I think it's just my vibe, though. Like, I thought the whole album just flowed really well for my kind of vibe. Like, I, I could listen to it from front to back throughout the whole thing. No problem. Um, it was a nice <laughs> vibe. Your cats are going crazy, but anyway, it was a, a it was a nice vibe and like I re- I just really enjoyed like the the flow of it. Um, I kind of understood what he meant by the sun's tirade with when, when he's saying that you know it's just kind of a long hot day because the whole thing is kind of just a whole ride like a I don't want to say monotone but like a straight ride. There's not too many inflections, not too many downs, just kind of yeah. constant. And I know that a lot of people don't like that because you want an album to take you on a journey. And I kind of get that about this album, that it doesn't take you on a journey that much. But um, I still I mean, liked it, does, it. It doesn't really take you anywhere. Kind of, mm-hmm. just kind of like stuck in second gear the whole time. Well, I wouldn't say second. It's I'd like say, second gear. I mean, it's, it's I'd never say like really... third gear if you know how to drive a stick. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of the point. Like, it's just, <laughs> just kind of like. Almost. Uh, I don't know. And, and, and it's not bad. Like, so I enjoyed most of the songs on here. Like, the songs themselves, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But the fact that it was as long as it was, and the fact that all the songs were kind of in the same lane and just kind of the same exact vibe, uh, probably the same BPM. Like, I haven't gone in and, and analyzed it yet, but I'm pretty Fact sure checkers. they're about <laughs> the right. same BPM. Like, it just... it. That, like you said, it never takes you anywhere. It just kind of lulls you in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, if if he had taken five of these songs and like mixed in another five, there were maybe a little different vibe. Or even just cut off five songs and made it five songs shorter. You know, it it, it would definitely have been a little bit better. Because, man, I'm saying like halfway down, halfway through the album, you're just like, okay, what's next? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I, I can ag- agree with that a little bit. Just as I said, like, it is, like, very constant. Um, but I also think that's kind of what he was going for. Okay, I mean, if that's what you're going for, is to just you know? kind of... I, like, I mean, and he says it in there, you know? This is yeah. from a Vibers, you know? Yeah. He says in there, uh, you know, uh, this is that uh, Bootsy mixed with that, uh, with that boom bat. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's he understands, you know, what music he's trying to portray. You right. Know, like who who he's trying to get at It's you know, he's he admitted he was he had a drug problem, mm-hmm. you know, so he, he understands the vibe. He understands that kind of pocket. Right. Uh, so I guess he's just trying to fulfill that or, you know, make music that vibes with whatever he's vibing with. And he was vibing on some shit. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, there were definitely some some standout songs for me. I mean, Stuck in the Mud, which was crazy to me. Yeah. You know, the one with SZA. Like, SZA's just amazing. I mean, yeah. She's and, just a queen of, like, chill-ass hooks and, like, or not even that. I don't know. I mean. It, her voice is. Her ugh. little ad-libs, too. You know, yeah. the, just her little harmonies in, in the background are, mm-hmm. just, are just super dope. Um, you know, the, the song that, that they did on 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 her project that came out. Yeah. Was, was really good too. Uh, so yeah, these two make really good music together. Yeah. They really do make a lot of good music together. Um, and then I also really liked, um, I don't know, for some reason park was like that wannabe turn up song. Which one park? It was the one that was like when he's, um, Oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love that shit. Like that, that's to me, that's him at his best. Yeah. Like when he's, <clears throat> on one of these like chilled out beats, mm-hmm. on one of these kind of mellow beats, and he's just got that higher register, the energy pumped yeah. through with the compression cranked. You know, it 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 just it, it sounds live and it, yeah, it definitely it gets you turned up. 
And like when he goes like uh, rich is a bit, or he goes, I'm trying to be Nicki Minaj. Rich is a bitch in the drop. Rich is a bitch. <laughs> rich is a bitch on my side. Like that whole thing. Like yeah. when he's doing that shit, I'm just like, man, like he, he gets yeah. you to just start getting up. And exactly. then when he said, bitch, don't you know who you ask asking bitch? Have you tutored the pastor? I thought that was like one of the fucking cleanest lines you could ever have. Like, bitch, have you tutored the pastor? No, so sit your ass down. Shut you, the hell how you gonna up. tutor the pastor? How right. you gonna tutor me? You know what I'm saying? So like that was just like super fucking dope to me. Like I really yeah. loved how that like just all went together in that song. Um For sure. But I mean- Oh, I was just gonna say, but yeah, I think uh, one of my critiques for this album would be um if you if I didn't know that he was going for that vibe that he should have some type of inflection in there because it's all just very lull. Yeah. And I mean, the as much as I loved Park and I liked him in that higher register, like for me, an exact, a song that's like the exact opposite of that uh, was a lot. Like it was the one with the, with the Mike Will made a beat, probably like one of the most turnt beats on the whole project. But then instead of going into his higher turnt up register, he decides to like go into his super mellow, kind of chilled out, low voice. Mm-hmm. Like he he just, he just doesn't bring the energy in that. So I was like a little, not a little. I I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, I can I can hear that in your voice. There was just so much build up to, to this project, and I, I guess I just had such high hopes. You know, even at that show that we went to, he just happened to hop out the the uh, truck or the. The bus, oh, the bus that they had. And when he was we were just walking standing by. There. Yeah, we were just walking by him. So yeah. it was one of those like close encounters. Like, oh, that's him right there. He's like 10 feet in front of me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 10 and feet th- in front of me and five foot high. <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn, why are you talking about the hopping man like that? Man, he's hella short. He knows it. Like, yeah, the fuck? Yeah, short. I know. I, know. I mean, whatever. It don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The nigga's short. That's it. <laughs> don't but, think all these motherfuckers is tall in real life. They're not. Everyone's just as tall as you. Yeah. I'm only five foot five. Except for like. You know, people like two chains. Oh, two chains is super fucking tall. Yeah. Oh, I have to talk about Mag- magnificent coloring day, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So anyway, we chance have a ton of small. shit. Yeah, chance is small, but I'm just saying we got a lot to talk about. But anyway, this album, a lot was pretty good, but it was super super low, and it could have been yeah. a lot stronger. I, d- I I do agree with that. I think that his 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 low vibe on that um, still worked for the song, but he could he had an opportunity to bring it up yeah. and he just didn't so i guess you know you try and think about like the way i think about it is i try and think where this the artist was going especially an artist like this when they actually do think about things like this now if i was trying to think about stuff like that when it comes to like a, like a jeffrey or something like that i'm probably not thinking as deeply as that probably. because i don't i don't give them as, mu- as much as credit for sure cuz i'm a hater but <laughs> and i guess even to speak to your point where he was saying uh, that the whole point of this was to kind of create this hot day and it's supposed mm-hmm. to all be the same, then maybe he knew he had a turn beat. He had to bring it back down. Mm-hmm. So he brought it down with his flow. Right. And just brought it back to Mellowville. Right. You know, maybe that was part of the reason why he did it. Right. I don't know. Who knows? But you know what I'm going to do to you right now? I'm going to just throw something at you because I know you said that you never want to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, what would you so. give it? One out of ten. I don't do numbers. <laughs> I don't do numbers. I know. You, I knew you weren't gonna answer it, but I just wanted to ask like you. The numbers not based on anything. Like yeah. I'm not. Where's I don't have scale? a category of you know broken down items that I'm then gonna give different scores to and then give an <laughs> average of those scores. Right. If you're doing it any other way, then it just just it's not fair to the artist. So no, I don't give numbers. Uh, <laughs> I'll say you know it's worth a listen once, um, and if you want to listen to it again, then you know be my guest. You don't listen to it any, anymore? I listen to certain songs, uh. but I don't listen to the whole project. It's just, it's, it's, I need to get somewhere, you know? I mean, like I, I know. said, I will pick out You always turn song. up, and I'm always vibing. That's all it is. I vibe too, though. Nah, nigga, you I don't vibe, vibe as too. much. I've been vibing to that Mick Jenkins that we'll talk about next Ooh, time. Oh, we gonna talk about that next time? Because we'll we can talk about, about it now. Time. I didn't like break it down yet. It needs a little more time. All right. We, we want to let that marinate. It's only been a few days. We want to let that marinate, because I've been on that Board. I want to give it at least a week. All right, we'll marinate on that. So overall, we both liked it. Uh, he says that it's a one-time listen. I think that I didn't say it's a one. I said nah, give it. Hating. I said give it a one-time listen and see if you want to listen to it again. 
All right, so he said that it's a one-time listen. Don't listen to that shit. And I said, Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And There's I'm cuts saying, on it. There are there joints are on it. Yeah. But you know, give it a listen all the way through. Don't give up on listen to it all the way through, and then see if you want to listen to it. Again. If you feel like you're gonna give up on it, shoot yourself because you don't deserve to listen to it. <laughs> no, sure. I liked it. I liked sure. it a lot. I listen to it still. Um, so yeah, that's that's just my thing about it. Um, Mick Jenkins. I'm just gonna say that we're not gonna go into it, but. Um, <laughs> That what him, Mick Jenkins, and Isaiah Rashad should do some music together. Not saying that they're both in the same vein, but they have woof, yeah, some things. Anyway. It would be, would be special. It would be amazeballs. Um, what else has happened in hip-hop besides that amazing album that Cedric doesn't like? Um, <laughs> Jesus. Well, I, I know, mean, I'm going to go in. I'm hating, huh? You, you were alluding to something that you had, had gone to. Oh, shit. Yeah. Magnificent Coloring Days. How was so, that, motherfucker? Dude, crazy. So, um, Magnificent Coloring Day, for the, those of you that please, don't know. Please, please explain it to the folks that probably know nothing about it. So, this was a um, a concert that was held at, I'm just going to call it what I know it as, cell, U.S. Cellular Field, but it's what, Guaranteed it, Bank now? Or? It, was, it, it was at U.S. Cellular? Isn't that what that is? It was. Yes, it's U.S. Cellular. Okay, but what did they call what do they call Sox Park now? You it, it it's, it's U.S. US cellular. cellular. Okay, so the, and 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 so for, for the people before that, it was Kaminsky Park. Kaminsky Park. Ooh, look at me knowing shit, right? Hey, you you better Props. give me some for that. Yes. Props. Boom. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they call it now. Yeah, it's called so guaranteed. What ba- yeah, what do they call it now? Sox Isn't it guaranteed bank? Guaranteed rate. Oh, guaranteed rate. Guaranteed what? rate. Stadium? I should Google it. I have Google in front of me. Whatever. No, no. We just did it the old-fashioned <laughs> way. All right. And that's fact. Because <laughs> we said it and you're listening to us. Anyway, so it was at the Sox Stadium. Right. And this is the first biggest festival. The first biggest? Our first festival, I think, in first festival to go down to the South Side. Is, am I right? I believe so, yes. It's the first festival to go to the South Side. And it was super amazing like i had one of the best times of my life there um not i wouldn't say ever but it's in the top 10 top 10 yeah that's pretty good that is pretty good wow and i've seen i've seen earth wind and fire (laughs) i've seen the roots what oh yeah yeah, i saw those so exactly so Um, so is this better than the roots no who did you see who was there so I wasn't there. So this is what I'll go through the whole thing. Good. So um, we got there around two. It started at one. We got there around two. Um, little Uzi Vert was performing while I was waiting in line. Uzi. Yeah. Um, I was waiting in line. Um, I saw him on the stage, and I, to be honest, he he has a pretty good performance. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's really involved in it. Um. I don't. He's think, a little dude too, right? Yeah. He's a super short dude. Um. He's really involved in it, but I would say that he. I think he was lip syncing. What? Yeah, dude. Like, I don't know if it has to do with the fact that he was using the auto tune so that he didn't want to, like, mess it up or something. So, like, the DJ just had his track and he was just, like, lip syncing to it. But then every now and then I would hear him, um, like, say some things. And so I, I, I got the under, like, I started to understand what he sounded like when he would say something. And then I understand what the, the track sounds like. So he was his own hype man to, a, to his kind own of, track? Sort of. So I was just kind of like, I don't know. But like, okay, of course, we're there with a ton of fucking kids, like a ton of kids. Like we were in line and uh, these I was trying to hide my alcohol. <laughs> so we brought a backpack and I had like my alcohol in this plastic looking like water bottle, but it looks like a flask. And um, so I stuffed it down the front of my pants. Nice. <laughs> you know? And yeah. so because I was like, are they patting people down? It didn't look like they were patting people down, but they were checking bags. And what me and my girlfriend did is we covered our alcohol in um uh tampons and like pads so they wouldn't actually go into it. But if you nice. shook it, you know what it is. Nice. So we didn't just didn't know. So when we saw that they were going in the bags, I was like, oh they're gonna shake that and they're gonna know. So let me just put this into my fucking 
you know, pants and then we'll be good. So I put that in there and these kids are like, oh, you know, you can't bring in a backpack or whatever, right? And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, they only said drawstrings. I was like, I'm bringing my fucking backpack. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. I had a fucking water bottle. I felt super old there too. But I had a fucking water bottle. I had a, a fuck- fucking water bottle. Yeah, a fucking water bottle. Okay. I had um like a scarf or whatever, like for Chrissy if she got cold. I had my, my um good girlfriend, you know, just all that stuff, like sweater and just shit, like being old people, making sure you're repaired. repaired. So anyway, I put stuff <laughs> down my pants and these kids are like yeah like i'm 17 i was like fuck damn and they're sneaking in like weed and i'm like jesus christ like i'm super old to be here right i'm, I'm sneaking in a hoodie they sneaking in weed i'm sneaking in alcohol though you know what i'm saying so oh, yeah, but true. All right. it's cool but anyway <laughs> so then um so we get in and um i'm waiting in line because i wanted to buy a sweatshirt got myself a sweatshirt um Uzi's on the fucking screen and I only saw his performance from the screen. So Got from it. what I saw, I think he was really engaged. I think he was really good. The only How thing was I the crowd? the crowd was super engaged. Okay. Yeah. So like the, the crowd, I mean, you can't deny that these kids love these, these, these rappers, you know, um, I'm going to take a sip. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I think yeah. it, it, it's always really interesting to take a look at the crowd when you're at a show like that, you right. know, regardless of how you feel about the artist, you mm -hmm. know, Look and see how the people are vibing. And, right. Uh, sometimes you can appreciate the artist more just by saying, like, you know, they're touching all these people. So right. maybe I don't get it, but they all, they all, a lot of people do. Right. All these people right here, they get it. Mm -hmm. And I think Lil Uzi Vert is one of those artists that, like, I'm never going to understand him. I'm never going to, like, be a big fan of him, but I'm always going to respect his his artistry, I guess mm -hmm. you can say. Um so so yeah so that happened he looked like he did a good job um the next artist was supposed to be Here we go. um so then the next person was so fr i i missed francis and the lights francis and the lights performed before ludo uzi vert i don't even know who francis and the lights is yeah, but i heard that they are pretty good so i'm gonna have to check them out um young thug was supposed to go on after ludo uzi vert but they did not or he did not so um after that um, Why didn't he go on? I could have sworn I saw him on Instagram with Lil Uzi Vert the same day. Young Thug? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, people have speculated because Lil Wayne was there and there was tension, tension. But I don't. I to be honest, I have no fucking clue. Okay. I have no clue why he didn't go on. Right. Um. So then, <laughs> so Young Thug didn't go on, and then um, let's see here, and then Tyler the Creator goes on. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, and that was super interesting. Um, so I really, really, really loved his outfit. It was super loud. What like, was he wearing? Oh my it was God, like this really shit. like crazy, um, yellow and brown ish type of, um, it was pre predominantly yellow, yellow. Okay. But, um, it was like leopard print print, I think, or something like that with oh. like a pink collar. Oh, Jesus. And it was a, sh it was matching shirt with shorts. Jesus. So, but it was super dope to me. I, I like, I loved it. Um, it's, I think it's from his like clothing line that he has too. But, um, so that was cool. He put on his performance. I didn't know half the songs. I only knew a couple of them because I haven't listened to him in a while, but, um, there were kids all around us that loved him. And then he also s started to go on stage and he says, I don't know who the fuck put this together, but, um, I don't know why you guys are sitting behind the stage. This shit is fucked up to me. This is stupid. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, I know the reason why people are sitting behind the stage. I don't know why you're getting that tight at, at a uh, chance like that. Chance, yeah, because he's the one that opened that up so more people could come in and experience enjoy it. it. Yeah. So there's there, and I don't know if Tyler knew, but there's screens behind the stage. I walked all around the the stadium, and there's screens behind the stage, so you can see what's going on. And there's out everything was on every single um, big screen that was there. So I'm just like, that's kind of like fucked up for you to say like that. But then it's also Tyler, so he can get away just with trying, saying that. Yeah ton of shit so Jesus. anyway okay but i will say that he had that place turned the fuck up too um the kids really did love him some of the, the kids didn't understand when um i think it's not taco but it's the other one that's like the bigger dude he was his hype, hype man um he was doing some weird shit and nobody was like really feeling that um <laughs> and then after that kanye west came out what what like he just came out yeah he was the surprise guest or what? he was one of them. So Kanye comes out and Kanye What's is, he do? He does a ton of songs, but unfortunately I was in line for nachos when all that happened. And then when Kanye oh. came out, when Kanye came out, everyone started running everywhere. They were like, choom, 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 choom. Like 
all these kids just running and like bumping into people and everything just boom, boom, like running. And I was like, what the fuck? I tried to get on Snap. Everybody was gone in like two seconds. Damn. People, they said was, Kanye and everybody dropped their nachos They dropped the ran. Kanye song. I don't even remember what song it was, but they dropped that song and everybody was just out like in two seconds. I'm telling you, a whole line of nachos people, people that order their nachos left their fucking nachos. Damn. It ran to the fucking, uh, to the fucking, uh, not stage, but yeah, actually yeah. they did actually bum rush the field no shit yes they bum rushed the field i being the grown-ass woman that i am no, i paid didn't. ten dollars for my motherfucking nachos no you didn't i want my goddamn nachos i've seen kanye in concert plus there's a goddamn tv right here so i'm gonna watch Damn. him on this tv With and i'm no gonna get my, yeah i'm gonna get my nachos that's it because i was ordering them already i was right there niggas was already running I was how like, was the nachos well that's another story <laughs> I'm walking to my seat because I want to see the, at least the end of this performance and this bitch fucking bumps into me and knocks down no. my fucking nachos. No. Swear to God. Yo, Kanye nachos. <laughs> Swear to God. I miss Kanye nachos. That, that's what those, those <laughs> I are. I miss Kanye for these nachos. You're exactly. going to knock down not yep. my I miss Kanye so she for knocks these him nachos. Down. So this bitch knocks, knocks him down or whatever and I'm, she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm just looking at him. I'm looking like, for real? And so, like, I'm kind of pissed because, like, I've already missed half of fucking Kanye. Yeah. I want to go see Kanye. And Chrissy can see it on my face. She's like, what the fuck? So then um, I'm like, all right. I'm looking down at the nachos. I'm looking at her. She's still standing there. We're good there for, like, a good 60 seconds. Like, can I have some money for these nachos? I said that was $10. You want to know what she said? What That's she unfortunate. She looked at me in my fucking face and said, That's unfortunate. I told you to turn around. I said, bitch, from... Where did I, was I supposed to turn around? I was looking at the bitch when she when she was walking no. towards me. If she's talking about when I looked back and I said to Christy, like, because she was getting some fucking uh, spoons for our nachos, I turned around. I saw her coming at me. I pulled my nachos in, and she still bumped into me. Bump, bumping the nachos, low. She still bumped him. I, I saw her coming at me. She didn't say shit to me. I saw her fucking dumb ass coming at me. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Damn. You know, I saw this fucking dumb, cheap ass bitch coming at me. So I was like, you know what? Fuck you, bitch. You said that to him? No, I didn't say that. Okay. But <laughs> you know what I said? I said, bitch. <laughs> nah, so what I actually did say, because she said that's unfortunate, I looked at her and I literally screamed at her. I said, go. I just said go, and I think she kind of saw like because I was I was like literally about to fight some bitch over some nachos. It was that, I had to. <laughs> those were I, I miss Kanye nachos. Yeah, exactly. So I had to think about it. I was like, Tressie, are you really gonna fight this girl over nachos? No. And that's when I also learned that I grew up because I'm not gonna fight nobody over some fucking nachos. But I told her ass to go, and she just looked kind of not scared, but like just kind of like, oh shit, and then like left right. So that's what the Kanye does to you. Kids. Exactly. And so, so then I'm walking around trying to find some lady, to re, like somebody to replace my nachos. I go back to my nacho stand that I got them from. They say they won't replace them. So I got to walk all the way over. It was a whole fucking thing. But anyway, I miss Kanye. That's not the point. You missed the whole set. Missed the whole set. Damn. Missed the whole set because some bitch didn't want to fucking be courteous and give me fucking $10 for the nachos. She's knocked out of my hand. But it's cool, though. It's cool because I ended up seeing John Legend after that. And John Legend was super fucking emotional. Nice. Um, he played Emo like. Wait, wait. He was emotional? Not emotional, but he made me emotional. He made you emotional. So oh. he, he played a lot of good songs, a lot of his classics and stuff. But um, what he did was um, he played all of me at one point. And then he also right after that, he played Glory. So all of me is me and Christy's like mushy song that we love and everything so yes that was like an emotional point for us and then all of a sudden you're gonna play some fucking glory after that like glory and everybody's got their fucking fist up and i felt so proud to be in a city where everyone like everything is super segregated but when we come to that concert everyone has a fist up like i took a picture of it i put it on our instagram i was like this is something that's super monumental to me and it was super like yeah. awesome to be a part of I almost wanted to cry during the, and I kept my arm up throughout the whole song. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I was like, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you just think about everything that's going on in the world. And I was like, I can sacrifice the pain. And I did have like a fucking <laughs> crook in my arm the next day. I was like, trust me to get back to the gym. What the fuck? Damn. But yeah, I kept my arm up the whole song and I was just like, that shit was super dope. Um, so then after John legend, 
uh, Collie Grove came out. Oh, hell yeah. Which was Two Chains and Lil Wayne. Hell yeah. That sounds like fun. This is my man. first time seeing Lil Wayne in concert. How was he? It was so fucking worth he, it. He's another Lil Wayne. Another oh, Lil Wayne next to a tall dude, one. I never thought that I was. The, I did not know that how much of a Lil Wayne fan I was. Lil Wayne is dope. I never knew. Yeah. And his DJ was scratching the fuck out of it. Like, the, he was on actual vinyl, my nigga. That's what's like, up. Uh, it was so crazy. And That's then I up. never knew how great of a performer 2 Chains was. 2 Chains, Two Chains is a professional. He's fucking he's a professional. dope. I was, and that was my first time seeing 2 Chains. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. They keep playing. They only, they played, half of their songs were features. And I was like, these are all hits. Hits after hit after hits. And then they played their shit. I'm like, hit after hit after hit. That duo has hit after fucking hit yeah i was like this is crazy so that was like a super fun thing to be a part of i was like i never understood it like you you um listen to music over and over and over and then you like kind of like it kind of gets mundane but when you go to a concert like that's when it gets hyped up you know right when you like have other people's energy to feed off of and you know it's it's not just you but right it's you vibing with other people who are also vibing exactly so that was pretty cool to do. Um, and then Alicia Keys came out after them. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Common came out on Glory with uh, John Legend. And that was like the only other special guest. So the special guests were like two. Got it. And then Jimmy Butler came out on Lil Wayne's. Uh, and did what? He was out. He came out in a Blackhawks jersey and just said, hey, basically. <laughs> Chicago. <it>. Hi. <laughs> and then went, went, went away. Okay. That was it. Um, Alicia Keys came out. She did a thing. I thought it was a pretty good performance. I wasn't super overly imp- impressed, but How I was wasn't vocally? disappointed. No, f- amazing. Really? Okay. Yeah, she's good. She's good vocally. Um, I I don't know why a lot of people give her slack for for being like like they say that she I've can't sing. Right, and I was like, is I this don't get true? it. You were there, so you know, please tell yeah, me. Yeah, I I I thought she sounded. Fine. I thought she sounded really good. I think I also even think that the sound at the festival for as far back as I was, I wasn't even that far back because I was I I was on I was in the seating and then I but I wasn't on the field which was like the floor seating, and the way they get uh, uh, set up the uh, everything was uh, like the speakers and everything was perfect. Like I was able to hear everything, and oh. I don't think she was bad at all. So so the rumors that the makeup helps the voice isn't true. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, call you can call me out on like my ear, I guess you can say, but I thought she sounded great. Okay. She did not sound horrible all at right, all. Take I that. Think people, take yeah, that. exactly. People need to fucking Back shut the up. Fuck off. <laughs> I just don't get it. And maybe right. maybe I'm too much of an Alicia Keys fan, but I'm no, also no, because I'm sure if she sounded bad, you would have been like, oh right. shit, right? What the fuck. The same way I'm I, I'm critiquing her on like she's not a very good performer. Like okay. I don't like seeing her just rock, <laughs> and yeah. like walk up and like I don't just just stay behind that piano. Just sit at the piano and sing. That's what yeah, you, that's, that's all you need to. Yeah. She she was walking up because there's like this walkway that they had, and she was walking up and down, and I'm just like, yeah, we don't need all that. Just sit down. And play. I mean, I love seeing how thick you are, and like you know, power to our thick girls. Yeah, but yeah, she looks nah. great, but yeah. just just sit down and play. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I mean that that wasn't too bad, and then Chance came out and the, the shit went crazy. <sighs> shit went crazy right it was super dope he he was did just he do like, everything he did everything he did a lot um i was already drunk by this time so bear with me are. yeah i was i was fucking lit at this at this point I've, I've been there from it was like from two to like 12 that i was there i think so Damn, at this really? point nothing yeah nothing like st- started on time like chance was supposed to go on at like nine and i don't th- i don't think he went on until like 10 so wait, Alicia Keys was before Chance? Mm-hmm. Jesus, okay. And then Skrillex went after Chance, and I we left because I'm not a Skrillex fan. Um, but and I, I, apparently everybody left after that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Skrillex is like spinning with like 10 people. Yeah. No, I, I doubt it. He probably had a big-ass crowd. Yeah, yeah. I think that's when all like the kids' kids like stayed, yeah. like the EDM dudes. But um. But yeah, Chance did a really good job. I think it was very um, inviting to like the youth as well as like the the ad- adults would be able to get it, because he had like um, puppetry, like kind of like you know if you go to Chuck E. Cheese. Really. Yeah, it was like it was kind of weird, but it wasn't like coloring book. Yes. 
Okay. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, I think Chance again never fails. I mean, he's a fun guy. Yeah. His, I mean, his his energy comes through his music, and I mean, it comes through on stage. I can't even tell you. I I can't even describe it in words how how great that performance was. He's just super dope, and he's probably like if I had to like pick like top performers and stuff like that, or like if I have to put it all into like one category he's up there in my top with like kendrick and them like i swear performer performer okay. performer um just entertainer artist? i guess you could say artist too i think you could say rapper he's a good rapper i don't know i think him and his brother are neck and neck mm. that's that i mean taylor. i have to i need to listen to a lot more taylor bennett but taylor, taylor. is fucking dope I think Taylor could probably wrap circles around Chance, but I'm not ready to like stand behind that just yet because I haven't listened to a lot. But I've only heard like probably three or four songs from Taylor and a freestyle you did on Sway. So I saw the Sway freestyle it was pretty good. Yeah, but anyway, that was magnificent coloring day. That was super fucking fun. It was amazing. It was great. Nice. Um, should we get into this? Game Meek Mill beef. I mean, we. I mean, we kind of have to. Uh, okay. Um. Well, I've been talking for a while. Why don't you go ahead? <laughs> I mean, you know, this it's is just exhausting to think about this goddamn beef. I, but yeah. I, I mean, it's it's interesting to me because when it first started, you know, um, it was uh, there were a lot of question marks, you know, yeah. and and I think what's made this this kind of beef interesting is that. It's it's gone back and forth, right? It wasn't completely one sided ever at one time, so the the fact that it was going back and forth, it kind of left you on the edge of your seat, like, oh yeah. my god, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? Yeah, I, I guess I would agree with you. Like in the beginning, it was super interesting because it was like, oh shit, like what's happening? What's going on? And then it would be like, oh, oh, it was like kind of like yeah. pong, <laughs> exactly. you know what I'm saying? And then all sudden it started to slow down and it's just like okay this is a little too much can we get a conclusion out of this motherfucker or what yeah so just a quick rundown guys game came out with this uh this song about meek mill uh what was the first one called 92 bars yeah 92 bars okay and you know what it, it, it wasn't so much of a diss song it was more just like a song with a couple little jabs in it and uh some rumors about you know, Meek Mill having snitched on uh, the game for some incident. And then at, uh, it came out uh, that, you know, Mr. Sean Kingston has some things to say because he was also a part of this whole incident. Uh, Sean Kingston said, uh, just kind of started running off at the mouth talking about the game, you know, and it was like a bunch of Instagram, Twitter fingers going back and forth between game, Meek Mill, and... Uh, uh, what's that guy's name I just said? Sean, Sean Kingston. Kingston. Right. <laughs> He's so unforgettable. <laughs> uh, right? Like who? Right. Um, Mike Jones. And, and, and the whole thing started because Sean Kingston got his chain snatched yeah. at the club when he went over to talk to games people. So apparently what had happened was the game uh, invited Sean Kingston over to his part of the club. Uh, and then what? Sean Kingston got hit upside the head with a bottle. And lost his chain. Yeah, that I think that's Sean's story about it. Meek, a game story is that he told Meek that people are getting their chain snatched every day in L.A. and just to be chill, Meek leaves, uh, Sean stays, and his uh, chain gets snatched. So that's just the two stories that are going on right now. It, whatever, okay? Uh, so Meek's defense after game first initially dropped it was that this is all just publicity yeah he's got an album coming out he's just trying to start some beef to get a buzz for his album which happens a lot a lot of yeah, people, a lot do, of people that. do that you know game has been in a lot of a lot of shit with people a <laughs> yeah. lot yeah um and a lot of times it looks like it's publicity Mm-hmm. so anyway uh meek mill responds to the 92 bars with with bars actually Boom. Um, he, he he drops a song. It was like, what, two days later, I think? Yeah, a couple days, yeah. It was pretty quick for me. Uh, and it was a song with uh, Meek Mill featuring O'Malley and uh, what was the OG? <clears throat> Who was on it? Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. O'Malley. 
Yeah. Go so, headphones. So, <clears throat> so they do a remix to uh, the ooh beat. Yeah. Young and May is hot out in these yeah, streets. Yeah, people nigga. love that shit. Fucking shit. That's what I'm talking about. That's my girl. Yeah. If I meet her, I want to shake her fucking hand and be like, you know what? You are fucking awesome. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, sorry, I'm just thinking. Yeah. They got loud. On some gay shit. They- <laughs> <laughs> Some hip hop shit, damn. I know. I'm just messing around. Yeah. I knew. I knew you were going. To... I was anyway. gonna say some gay, but yeah. I had to refrain, just like Donald Trump refrained from. Anyway. Oh, um, let's go on that too. No. <laughs> let's make this a long ass episode. Fuck it. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, so Meek Mill drops this song, uh, uh, and you know it's it's okay. I mean, I was I was honestly just happy when it dropped that I'm like, oh yes, shit, he responded. Meek drops bars, and you know what? They were actual bars that were like aimed the game so yeah i mean i i was how'd you feel about the meek mill initial womp womp i didn't i wasn't very impressed but okay. i mean it wasn't horrible i will i will give him that it wasn't yeah. like it wasn't like his response to drake yeah <laughs> it was it better than his response to drake way late but i don't think there was en- enough to say about game like for it to be a diss track you know what i'm saying like you, all you're doing is calling him a stripper and that was like the the harshest thing you said to me, at least. Um, but at least it, it was bars at game. Yeah, it was bars at them, and that, I, I that appreciate that and stuff. respect that. Yeah. Um, but then. Right. It was like what <laughs> ten hours, twelve hours after he had released that song. Yep. The game released. Pest, Pest control. control which, Ooh, look at that. Yeah, which was released on the same beat. Mm-hmm. Hours after, like less than 24 hours after he released his diss song. And Pest Control, uh, in my opinion, is, is just... Amazing. It's it just, was, it's one of those diss songs that, that, that just end, ends it. You can't come back from that. It's one that you, it's one that you can't come back from, right. <laughs> it was uh, like, it, it deaded everything. It was super fucking lyrical, super fucking disrespectful. Yeah. And... Catchy catchy and every bar was a fucking bar every bar was meant for me every or, or whoever else it was meant for yeah or exactly. beanie or yeah or o'malley or o'malley mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> like the way it ended though as soon as it did that i was like oh my god i totally remember that fucking freestyle yeah, on sway i remember fucking here and then i'm like this nigga's weak but i, I wanted to give him the benefit of doubt but <sighs> Nah, man, you go up this way, you already know what it is. You better have something ready. If you can't fucking rap, you better have something written and ready. And so, and so for me also, what was so hip-hop about this diss was, you know, he, he did expose a bunch of stuff, not just about Meek, but about his, his whole camp, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody who was on that song, he, he got it. Everybody who was, on the, who was a part of that song. Yeah. Everybody who said some shit about him, he got at it at that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he used the same beat. Yeah. So Ooh. now, when you hear that beat and you think about a diss, I totally I I couldn't tell you what Meek Mill sounded like. I could not. I can't even tell you what he said. I couldn't tell you anything about it at this point because I've been bumping. It's pest control. Yeah, it's exactly. Hot. This shit's super dope. Uh, so the ties changed there, but then the story's not over, guys. It's so not over. And, over. And so th- this is what's kept this thing interesting. <laughs> Is that you know? Obviously, Game has an album coming out, so he right. does the whole press run. Right. He goes to Wendy Williams. He goes to all the radio stations, um, and he's talking. He's talking. He's explaining his side of the story. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. Um, and then it turns out, um, what the Bad Boy reunion tour is in uh, is in Philly. Yeah. Benny Siegel comes out on stage. Yeah. And he says some shit. He's like, "I'm I'm the king of, of Philly." Yeah, he did. Wait, are you, did you? When was this? Did we? I feel like we. Um, no, this this happened after Pest Control came out. It did. Okay. But before Pest Control video came out. Okay. Okay. After he dropped the song. Beanie Go ahead. In Philly. Do you boo? Do you? And he says, you know, uh, I'm the king of Philly, and I'm gonna make sure this city's represented right. And everybody's like, "Why the fuck would he say that?" And then, uh. It comes out. So before, like the day before that happened, um, you know, when Game is doing his press run, he says something kind of interesting. He says, you know, Beans was in the was in the studio helping on Melly with his lyrics. Yeah. And everybody's like, wait, what? 
So it's these dudes got Ghost Riders? What? Uh, and then everybody's like, Nah, it's just game. He's he's just hating. Wait, you said that Beanie's uh, was writing O'Malley, right? Yes. Okay. And then who said that? Game said that. Yeah. But then Beanie was being interviewed, and he he pretty much said the same thing. Yeah, I think he was being inter- interviewed on Tax Stone's podcast. Yes. Yeah. And so. Uh, at the same time, you know, he also was like, you know what, uh, uh, me and Game were cool. You know, that was just, you know, I was just there kind of helping them with bars, you know. Because mm-hmm. it's Philly I wasn't, versus, you know. Right. He was like, you know, I just stood up for my city. It's nothing against the game. And so that was kind of his his way of backing out of it being him versus Game. Mm-hmm. Is that and, he was just there representing, helping out. Right. And then Game goes on to The Breakfast Club and actually says that Bean, uh, Beans and Whack who is a uh, game's manager talked and that they squashed it basically. And they, and cause game has already said like before they even talked, he said that on hot 97. He's like, I never wanted to go at beans, but yeah. if you're going to come at me, I got to come at you. That's to. some hip hop shit. Got and to. I'm fucking loved hearing that shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, so then, you know, the fact that Benny said that at that show in Philly, was just like, wait, what? So apparently there's, been footage that's been released now uh um there's been alluded to but uh it's in the end of the pest control video it's a uh, game actually purchased the footage to put in his video huh uh there's of, an actual video of that of uh, beanie siegel getting sucker punched oh come on that's not after the fact though that was before he went on the stage at the reunion, Bad Boy reunion tour. And saying that he was the king of Philly. That was that was after. So before he went on stage, he got sucker punched. Huh. And then he went on stage and started saying shit like, I'm the real king of Philly. I'm going to make sure the city is And that's what Game is right. saying. Game is saying that that shit happened. And that that happened. And that that's... He's and got footage. Whack, well he, the, the footage is on the end of the pest control video. Are you kidding me? We will pause this shit right now because I, I thought people said that they did not have footage of it. Because Game bought it and put it at the end of his video. Came out yesterday. What? I'm watching it right now and pausing. This pause is brought to you by pausing in the middle of a podcast so you can watch a video and understand what your co-host is talking about. We'd like to thank you for taking this time with us. Now back to the show. So we just paused it so I can see what the fuck he was talking about. And that shit is crazy. So yeah, Benny Siegel got punched uh, by some dude from Dream Chasers. Damn. Uh, For uh, saying that he wrote O'Malley's shit. You know, they claimed it was for some other shit that was going on. But But you you got Benny Siegel on a fucking track though, bruh. This is starting to make Meek look super fucking suspect. Yes. Super suspect. How you gonna just punch all your problems away? You can't just go punching nah. all your problems away. And then, I don't know if you were gonna get to it, the ghost riding accusations or... Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that even adds a whole nother layer to it. Right. You know, you guys are going at Drake for having a ghost rider, and you got Benny Siegel in the studio helping O'Melly with his raps. Yeah. And then you also have... They're also claiming that a uh, game has a, a ghostwriter. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Marcus Black. I mean, yeah, that's. And then he goes on to Hot ninety seven and goes and battles Marcus Black on Hot ninety seven. Who does? Game. Oh. Because Marcus Black is his dude. Is he? Because he's in his his thing. So Marcus Black goes because apparently Marcus Black is a rapper too. So. Game was like, yeah, you might get Ghost Rider. Come on, let's go. And so they go at each other. And you can kind of see, like, Game go at it, you know? Because, like, it it does look like, um, um, not, what what's the word I'm not, not incognito, but, like, uh, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for? It doesn't look rehearsed. It looks. It's not scripted. It's scripted. It's organic. Yes, organic. It looks organic. It looks natural. It looks like they weren't doing so anyway, like it wasn't they, theater. Yeah, it wasn't theater. It was nothing like that. So I don't know. Meek is about to lose in these streets if he continues with. He shit already like lost. This. I mean, game drop pest control hours well, after he, lost. he he's, dropped. He's, he's two and oh. I'm sorry, zero zero oh and two. Yeah, he's zero oh and two. I I don't know what else the fuck he thinks he can do. 
Like, you looking crazy out here, bro. Yeah, so the only problem is that if this shit gets kind of personal, you know, and, and Beanie Siegel already got punched, so you know, mm-hmm. uh, I hope it stays hip-hop. The thing is, is that I, the one thing I've learned about hip-hop is that niggas are super fucking sensitive. Yes. They are all fuck. All these yes. rap niggas are super fucking sensitive. They don't know how to, like, just yell go at somebody if they drop their nachos. They're going to kill them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, like they, don't, right. they don't know how to think about what the fuck they about to do. And they, they feel like they have to, like, prove some shit to somebody. or like spill, No, you paying for these nachos. Yeah, like, that's $10. That's unfortunate. No, I said that's $10. That girl would have been dead. <laughs> she would have been dead if o- that was a o- rapper. Over $10. Over $10. So now you get mad over people. Like, I understand it like it's your name in these streets. But if you were just authentic from the start, what the fuck? Right. People can say whatever they want to about you. Stop doing some shady shit. Stop doing shit that you ain't supposed to be doing. Like if O'Malley is supposed to, like if if, if Beans is supposed to write for O'Malley, have that nigga sit, uh, write a uh, sign an NDA like all these other bitches be doing. You know, right. be smart about your ghost writers. You don't see games ghost writers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Drake's. You don't see Drake's ghost writers running around here talking about. Right. Yeah, I wrote for Drake. So Quentin probably wrote, or he, 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 we all know that he did. did. So, definitely did, yeah. But he can't say it because it's called an NDA, my nigga. Non disclosure. <laughs> like, you got to be smart. These niggas ain't smart. I don't know. This is, that's just all I think about whenever, when it comes to like people getting their feelings, when it comes to this beef. Like, it's exhausting because you are fucking grown. Like, Game was shit. saying that he's like 36 year old, 36 years old. 36? Yeah, he's 36. He's been in the, the game for a long time. Yeah, it was crazy. Game was like 15 a, a West years Coast or OG. Yeah, he seriously is. And and Meek's been in the game for a, <laughs> quite a while too. I mean, it's not like he's an OG OG, but you know what I'm saying? And then you're going to snuff an OG? Like, you just getting disrespectful. mad disrespectful now. Disrespect. I don't know. But... That that's that's how it is, for that I guess. Um, yeah. What else were we gonna talk about? I don't know. I don't like the whole game, uh, beef shit. But I kind of side with game on this one. Yeah. I just gotta. Oh yeah, Kid Cudi and Kanye were going at it, but now yeah, they made over. up. They kissed and made up. That was quick. Yeah. It lasted about a week. Yeah, it did or not even. <laughs> but that I was mean, interesting. And then now Kid Cudi's got an album that's supposed to be coming out soon. Oh, was that just for publicity too? I mean, maybe. Huh, interesting <laughs> how those things work. Um, what else? There was some Pete Rock, Young Dolph shit that happened where Pete Rock was saying Young Dolph is trash. Um, Pete, uh, and then um, what's his name? Ninth Wonder kind of stepped in and said like, you know, yo, we can't be too old when it comes to this bullshit. That's just some shit that happened. Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about like old heads and young old heads, heads versus the versus the new heads. Yeah, young head, old head, baby head. Just do you, kids. Yeah. You know? Just do, do you. you. If I don't like it, I don't like it. If you don't like it, I, you don't like it. If shit, just I mean, like whatever. Like I just wish they would. The only thing is, I wish they would fucking respect the culture more. That's it. That's boom bang. I can't do. I can't make them. You can't right. make somebody do something. So it's whatever. Um. But their culture is different, so... You yeah, know, exactly. They, they I, respect I, no, their culture. You were a part of that. You saw it. I saw it. You I saw, saw it them happen. all into that shit. I super saw it happen. And that was super weird to be there. I was like, I realized how old I was. I was like, 30 is old now. But it's okay. Yeah, I, I am not mad at being old. It's great. I love my life. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck y'all niggas doing with y'all life. She... I know, I love mine too. It's awesome. It's amazing. It's great. What else were we going to talk about? We were going to talk about... Did we forget stuff? No, I think that's about it. Really? Oh, yeah. Timbaland. Oh, Tim. I don't know if any of you guys out there watch Empire. I know I don't. (laughs) Me either. But I know a lot of y'all niggas do. And guess Uh, what? But I just thought it was interesting. You know, uh, one of the things that I guess made me watch the pilot episode was that I heard that Timbaland was doing the music. And I'm like, oh shit, Timbaland, legendary producer. Blah, blah, blah. So so after two seasons, they decided to go a different direction. Yeah, they did. Uh, so it will no longer be Timbaland. Rodney Jenkins. Jerkins. Who's Rodney Jerkins? Rodney Jerkins and Esther Dean will be taking control. Drop it, drop it, little girl. Drop it, drop it, little girl. We'll be taking control of the music on Empire. 
Uh, so yeah, I I just thought it, it was it was interesting. I I I don't know if this is Empire trying to take a different direction. Maybe they broke ties with him, or if Tim is being like, I'm tired of doing this TV shit. I'm old. I'm gonna go retire. I I made enough money. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't watch it, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't watch. I watched the first few episodes, and then it got super fucking corny, and it was just like I can't really deal with this. Um, not really a fan of it because it started getting dumb. Yeah. So, so you know, if you guys notice the difference in the music, if you watch that show, the music. Um, then, hopefully, it's good. You know, just uh, I guess deal with it because that's what's happening. And the music wasn't really good to begin with. There was one song that. That one kid did. Oh no, the the one dude came out when we were at the Roots show and did the hook for the Roots. Oh the well, yeah, Jesse Smollett is an actual singer. Okay. And I think he's gay, like in real life. Okay. Because so I saw him in a movie. Some so as a gay woman, sometimes you try and look for gay videos, not videos. Excuse me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, gay movies, just to see, like you know, just this hashtag as, history. <laughs> And so, like, I, I, I was looking through Netflix, and I saw him on this movie called The Skinny, which was super horrible. And it's probably, like, scarred me for life for watching gay movies. <laughs> because, like, it's the acting what? and everything just sucks. It was bad? It was super bad. It was horrible. It was, like, the oh, worst. Wow. It was a group of, like, four gay guys and one lesbian chick, and they were all best friends. And they were, like, visiting the city and... Oh, it was just bad. Okay. <laughs> it was the worst. Anyway, but I think he's really gay, like in real life, but it won't say it. <laughs> oh, actually, I think he did say it on Ellen. Anyway, who what knows? What about his singing? But the, he's a the, gay the, ass singer. What What does that have to do with this? <laughs> anyway, anyway, Jesus. I just like talking about gay Christ. shit. <laughs> do you just want to have a gay segment to the podcast? Gay segment. Oh, you can it's get gay five minutes time. of gay. Yes. <laughs> You want, five minutes of you gay. Want, you, do you want five minutes of gay Let's every week? Every week. I'm about to add that shit, dude. I'm about to write that shit down right now. Five, five minutes, minutes of, gay of gay with Tressie Collier. I'm gonna have to go on and I'm gonna have to look up gay shit because you know what? I've always said like, because I'm, I'm. No, I'm not gonna give too much of myself. Should I? I don't know. Because I've always. I mean, said you're I'm, having five minutes of gay, so if you want to leave some suspense to for the five minutes of gay. All right. Five maybe, minutes of Maybe gay. we should just start with two minutes. I don't know. Five minutes is a long time. Oh, really? How okay. long does gay take? <laughs> 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 How long does gay take? I, I mean, love it. I mean, can you do it in five, two minutes? Uh, let's do, let's can do two you do and a half. Let's two meet, and a half? meet me in half. All right, all right. Meet me in half. All right. <laughs> meet me in the middle. <laughs> so gay will meet in the middle, two and a half. So gay. <laughs> I'm literally writing that down. <laughs> Anyway. And by writing, you mean typing into a phone. Yes, I am typing that into a phone. Anyway, guys, I, I don't know if you guys want to listen to us talk anymore because I'm kind of tired of listening to myself talk well, anymore. There's, what there's else you one talk other about? thing I wanted to ask you. Oh, no. Here it comes, guys. The debate. Oh. Just give me like five, give me five minutes on the debate. Okay. What do you yeah. want? So, you know, this presidential election is going on. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, a little bit of disclosure before. I just need y'all to understand. Uh, this is very important because uh, I'm sure you guys have heard the options that we have this yes. time. It's, it's, it's clown fantastic. Clown one and clown two. Exactly. It's not, it, it's not the best. So no. you might be thinking to yourself, oh man, this is, who, who cares? They're both fucking clowns. Who cares? No, because, you know, one clown is much worse than the other clown. And I would normally be totally against the lesser of the two evils. But, you know, if you have to choose between, like, Hitler and anybody else, you'll probably go with anybody else. Right. So, 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 so yeah, just pay attention to what's going on. Right. And a clear indicator of that was that first debate that just kind of happened on uh, on Monday. On Monday, right. <sighs> that was uh that was super hard to watch. Yeah, I mean, so I missed the first part. I went back and and was able to catch it. Um Yeah, I missed the racial uh discussion. Do- Donald Trump actually held his own at the beginning. Mhm. And then started saying law and order. 
Yeah, I mean, he he definitely, you know, pressed Hillary and kind of painted her as the career politician. Right. You know, which is, you know, part of the establishment, you know, part of like she is. the group of people that kind of just make our world go round, blah, right. blah, blah. Right. Which is, yes, what well, we all know she is. Right. Her husband was president. She's been plugged in since, been plugged in, since been plugged in. Yeah. Okay. That's why nobody likes her. Right. Uh, but then, you know, towards the, the the latter half of the debate, uh, I mean, he just started rambling. He just started talking so incoherently. And the times when he did make sense, he was just... Just horrible, right? Just terrible. I mean, yeah. Uh, the part that you were referencing, um, you know, when the question from the prompt was, you know, how would you heal the racial divide in the country? He said, I wouldn't, bitch. No, that's like, the question was, how would you heal the racial divide yeah and instead of saying healing words and things you know that would you know mend wounds he doubles down on the whole you know what being black and hispanic sucks your communities suck it's terrible for you so you know what you need more law and order this motherfucker and it's just like yeah i'm i'm, I'm super mad that i missed that part what? of it but the questions I'm, how do you heal yeah, exactly. So that's the so, so I missed that part of it. I think I missed like the first half hour of it, because um, it was only like an hour and a half or something like an hour. I, I don't know. I yeah. missed the first part of it. Um, I came in when he started super going like rambling and super like fumbling and like Hillary was basically winning most of that debate. Um, by the time I started listening to it, but um, yeah. Uh. The fuck was he like he, he, you ask him, the the moderator would ask him a question and he would say look I'm great I'm this I'm that he'd go into so many things about what he is and it just shows how much a fucking misogynistic fucking asshole he is yeah like like you need to like tell everybody how great and how how good you are at something like I understand that this is a an interview but you have to understand how to present yourself in a humbling manner and he doesn't and we all knew that we all knew that he wasn't going to be able to do that, but it was just so hard to fucking listen to and the hard to fucking yeah. stomach that we're actually at the point where this motherfucker and this other motherfucker is going to possibly be our president. And of, of course, like I am more for Hillary than I am for Trump. Yeah. Like I don't okay. mind, but if you're not for Hillary, there's other options out there for you to vote for. Yes. But but just make sure that you vote. Yeah. But I also feel like those votes will get lost somewhere. Yeah, I, and you know, uh, it sucks. But you know what? When it comes to president, I feel like in this election, you have to either you ha you have to just vote against Donald Trump for the next viable person, which would be Hillary Clinton. Uh, and that's you know what? I know this is. Oh yeah, you're picking. I am not picking Hillary Clinton. It's just Donald, Donald Trump cannot be president. Uh, but that another thing is that people say that you shouldn't be backed into a corner to where you have to vote against someone instead of for someone, you know? And I, I totally understand that. Like, that's kind of like fucked up if you think about it, but that's also like the society that we live in right now. And we didn't do anything up until this point to try and get something else in there, you know? For sure. Um, so we have to deal with what we have right now, kind of sort of in, move forward but i mean it's all super fucked up you know yeah and and so i don't know just kind of wrap up this whole yeah, political this, thing yeah you know let's wrap I mean? it up uh <clears throat> we got two minutes anyway uh so donald trump and hillary clinton were, are fighting for one spot in our government our government employs thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people okay there are thousands of elected officials uh so the people that are way more important in this upcoming election for a lot of the people that are listening, it's not the president. Nope. It's your local representative. It's your your local senators. It's your aldermen. It's your sheriffs. It's your prosecutors. All these when you when you get a ballot and you look at that ballot, you know president is one one name. This ballot is pages long. There's yep. all these other names on there. And those other names are actually what make a much bigger impact on your life than this one person in the White House. So, yes, the White House is very important because we have someone who could really do a lot of damage. Um, at the same time, all those other people's names on that ballot are also important. So, uh, 
really when the the saying is to go out and vote, it's yeah, you know, vote for Hillary Clinton because Donald Trump's a fucking asshole. But also do your homework about your local people and vote for the right people in locally because those are the people that will actually make the biggest change in your life. That's exactly. You vote local and that'll trickle up to the top. As soon as, as, soon as we start with our, our communities and, and, and change things there, change can go a lot further as soon as we fix our, our communities. That's, that's for all sure. it is. For sure. Um, all right. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and conclude it there. Uh, you can go ahead and check us out again. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram. Follow us crate. on iTunes. Rate, Through the crate. Uh, rate, review, and um, subscribe. Subscribe on iTunes. We're also on Stitcher. We're on Pocket Cast. We're Through on the crate. everything that you can think of. Through the crate. Com. Yes. Website. We have our website. Um, we have our Twitter. Through the crate. Through the crate. Um, just please, definitely, always, awesomely follow us. See, yeah. don't you like how I did that? I said awesomely. You guys are awesome. We love you as yeah. our listeners. Um, we will have um, another guest, hopefully, in the next coming weeks. Um, again, we apologize for the delay for this episode. But audio bullshit. Yeah, audio bullshit, but we won't We won't um, leave you guys neglected for too long. Um let us know what you guys are thinking about our last episode, the episodes before that. Glock was on here. All that good stuff. Just let us know what the fuck you think when we're out, motherfucks. Deuces. <laughs>